Hey gang, Tim here at Core Electronics, and today we're setting our codes free by designing API scripts that access real world data. Together, we will create a Python script that gathers live weather data at our location and have our computer tell us what to expect when we go outside. As an overview, API is an acronym for Application Programming Interface and is a standard that facilitates intercommunication between two or more applications. API are hosted on web servers. However, instead of a web browser asking for a web page, like how most of the interactions with the internet is done today, your program will ask for data. And then this data is usually returned to your program in a JSON format. A JSON, JSON format, stands for JavaScript Object Notation and is simply a lightweight data interchange format. The web server then replies with our desired data and gives a status code. Status codes are three number shorthand explanations of what happened when you requested for data and are very useful when it comes to problem solving. If everything has worked perfectly, the status code returned will be 200, 200. Now, full explanation on what every possible status code can be found on our online write-up of this tutorial at Core Electronics. Also worth noting, Sometimes an API key needs to be sent along with a request to authorize it so it can successfully return data. This is to stop API systems being overloaded or made vulnerable. So why use an API instead of just static data which you've downloaded or created yourself? In cases where data is changing quickly and you need data to be accurate, such as how many planes are in the air or the location of the International Space Station, APIs are the best. Also when only a small piece of a much larger data set is desired, or when you want to take advantage of already completed computations of like large data sets. Facebook, Spotify, and Google already have tons of data which have gone under large computational analysis, and the API lets you take the cream at the top. So let's now get onto our weather script. This script will utilize the Open Weather Map API. This API will give us live information on the weather anywhere in the globe. Now, numerous APIs exist online that are free to use so long as you create an account with their system. This is to stop their system being made vulnerable or getting overloaded. So here on screen now is their website. And once you've made an account with them and confirmed your email address, you get given an API key, which will look a lot like this. This is a good time to copy that key to your clipboard because we're gonna need it real soon. The next preliminary step is installing a Python package called Pyo. Now, there's many different Python libraries that can be used to get information from API, and Pyo is an excellent choice for doing this particular one, as it is a Python wrapper library made specially for the Open Weather Map web API. Now, this library will allow for quick and easy consumption of the Open Weather Map API data in a much more human-friendly fashion. Now, demonstrating now, I'll jump into the computer, Go down here, type in command prompt. This will open up the command prompt. I'll zoom in a little bit so the writing is larger. And simply, if we type pip install pyowm pyom, press enter, you'll see in this case, I've already downloaded it and it's successfully been installed. So as you can see, the installation of the Python package Pyome is now complete. And that was a really easy install. And if you didn't actually have the data in your computer, then it would take less than a minute to do so. Now that all our preparations are sorted, let's get into whipping up that Python script. So swinging back into the computer, you can see I have the Python programming window ready and raring to code in. So the natural first step is to gain the functionality of the Pyome library. And we do this by typing import Pyome. And just like that, all that functionality that we just installed, we can now use in this particular Python script. So now what we want to do is type OWM equals IOM dot OWM dash. And then what we saved to the clipboard before, we're going to type here. Now this is our API key. And this is how we can get information from the open weather map when we send out requests for it. So having done this, 
let's figure out where we want to get our location information from. We here at Core Electronics are based in Newcastle, so we're going to use Newcastle. Here, however, you could literally use whatever city you wanted. So I've set the variable city to focus on Newcastle. Now, to get the data from Newcastle, we're going to do as follows. Lock equals, so that lock is short for location, equals OWM dot weather underscore manager. Now this is extra functionality that we got when we imported Pyome. Bracket bracket dot weather underscore at underscore place. More extra functionality. And then we're going to import, we're then going to type city. So there's our key. This is what we're looking for from the web API. Here's a city, Newcastle. So quickly looking at my code, I can see I made a little boo-boo here. So by fixing that, we can now see what happens with all this data that we've just gathered. So print weather, run this like so, thinks for a little bit and then returns all the information back to us about the weather in this particular place. Nice. But that's not what we want this code to do. We want this code to tell us exactly what the weather is, the temperature. We might add a little extra spice at the end of it too. So from here, we're going to gather temperature. So temperature equals weather dot temperature unit equals Celsius. Because open weather map API is American, it returns most of its temperature in Fahrenheit, which is fine, fine and dandy. But in this particular case, we're going to do it in Celsius. And then we're going to type status equals weather dot detailed underscore status. So this is just getting more information from all the information that we gathered from this one. So detailed status tells us if it's a particularly windy day or if there's going to be lots of snow or other kind of weather phenomenon. So having done that, when we get this temperature data, it comes back a little bit messy. It gives us the min, it gives us the max, and it also gives us the average. So in our case, we're only going to want the average, so I'm just going to call it cleaned underscore temp underscore data. And we're going to make it an integer number, so that way we get rid of any of the kind of fractions or anything. By changing its type, which is that first function, then we're going to isolate the temperature. We're going to do this. By doing this, Excuse me. By doing this, we'll, we'll just get the average temperature from the open weather API data. Nice. So let's print a little message to ourselves. The temperature today in, and this is a neat little thing we can do. That's the end of that string city. So now it's going to refer back to this string, print that out, is, and now we're going to want to put in our clean temperature data. And to make my life easier, I will copy and paste that right there. And just to make extra clear, we're going to say degrees Celsius, full stop, end string, close bracket. So there's that line right there. So that's our first print. The second print we're going to do is to learn what the status of the day is, whether it's extra windy or extra cloudy. So the day today will have and that's where we're going to input our variable status. 
once we finish this strip. We can even put a full stop at the end of that sentence. Close bracket. And now, after saving and running this code, you'll see the temperature today in Newcastle, my location, is 21 degrees Celsius. The day today will have clear skies. Nice. So, what if we wanted to change the location? Well, we can do that really quickly because we set up a variable. So let's check out what it's like in Glasgow. Usually a rainy place, let's see if it's raining today. No rain today, but it is only 11 degrees Celsius. And over there, it's gonna have overcast clouds. Also pretty cool. Pretty cool that we can do it like that. So let's add to our code. Say the day is rainy and we have sprinklers outside and we wanna turn those sprinklers off when it's a rainy day. So let's set up a couple more lines of code. So that way, whenever Open Weather API tells us that it's gonna rain or snow or thunderstorm in our location, then we should get told not to turn our sprinklers on. So what we're gonna do is an if statement. If rain, so this is if the string rain is in status or thunderstorm in status or drizzle in status or even snow, unlikely to happen here in Newcastle, but you never know. Colon, we create our if statement. Print, no need for sprinklers today. Nice. Now we're gonna create an else statement running along with this if statement. It can just be there, indented, print. So whenever these string variables aren't in status, it means it's gonna be likely either a sunny or cloudy day and it's not gonna have any rain. So print, sprinklers are needed today, time to turn them on. So, saving here, quickly going through, double checking everything's okay. Now running the code, you can see in Glasgow, it says sprinklers are needed today, time to turn them on. We might adjust this a little bit. So in case it ever becomes negative degrees, then we don't turn our sprinklers on, but we won't in this case. And if we change the city, to Newcastle, like it was before, run the code. You can see the temperature today in Newcastle, 21 degrees Celsius. The day today will have clear sky and sprinklers are needed today, time to turn them on. A really cool next step to this script would be to automate it and get it to read out loud the weather for each day in the morning. It would be like waking up as Iron Man. That'd be pretty swell. You could also connect your sprinkler system to a microcontroller and automate the process of turning on and off your sprinkler system. To further aid creativity, an excellent place to find many free APIs is the online webpage Rapid API. This is numerous APIs, many freely accessible, which can really inspire some cool coding projects. All of the APIs are also rated by the community and given statistics on how quickly they respond with the desired data. Now, if you wanted to create an API script that informs you exactly how many astronauts are currently out there in outer space and what their names are, just jump onto our Core Electronics website and hit up the write-up for this guide. You'll find all the code and all the information you need to recreate it for yourself. And that's it. I hope I've inspired you to take your codes to another level. Until next time, stay cozy.